Sort is located in the control tilde under the workflow area. Uh, sort modifiers is basically a system that whenever you deal with certain modifiers, sorting will occur that will keep modifiers in a particular order to ensure that technical issues don't occur. Um, the panel at the end deals with something called the last sort, which refers to sorting actually happening only with the last iteration of a particular modifier. And what we mean by sort is that if you were to have a modifier stack that has a bevel, a uh, or that had a solidify and a um, bevel and a weighted normal, you would definitely want your modifiers to stay in a particular order. If you placed a new boolean on top of a weighted normal, it would cause issues. So for that reason, sorting is the way that it is. But sorting is one of those things that you don't necessarily configure, but you do adjust if you run into issues with. So one example is we will just go under mesh tools and we'll put a sphere cast on this. And then we will just go and uh, jump it up to level four. And under this panel, we're just going to turn on auto smooth and maybe set smooth on this just manually instead of using sharpening. The reason that we're not gonna use sharpening is that if I were to sharpen this, it'll put all these uh, creases on it due to it hardening the edges. So we just wanna avoid that. So that's one of the reasons that we have multiple venues when it comes to sharpening. So I'm gonna select both of these. And keep in mind that the modifier stack at this point is a subdivision and a cast. So if I were to perform a difference, things worked out. But let's go into control tilde and actually turn on sort subsurf. So there could be cases where you want subsurf to be kept at the end of the stack, but this isn't actually one of them. So by actually placing the boolean before the subdivision, if we go through the modifier scroll and we look at what we're evaluating here, we see that this mesh isn't getting the best outcome and that's due to the modifier order. So there are times where, you know, having, if you went in and just turned on every single option, more than likely you may get undesirable results. But if we were to talk about a scenario where subsurf would be needed, you know, we could show that as well. But now if we go back to this and we perform a difference, everything's fine. We could even press this and choose control shift B to just scroll through what this could be and change this to possibly an inset, press T to give it more thickness, you know, press one to isolate it, look at it in the top view, shift A, add another cube, you know, we scaled this one in and we could select both of these, press Q, choose difference. And that's like the vanilla workflow of how hard ops is. But whenever it comes to actually dealing with, you know, subsurf and sort and all those sort of things. It really depends on your situation that you're dealing with as you're working. So let's delete this and we'll create a different type of situation. So I'm going to create a subsurf situation, but we're actually going to build it a little bit differently. So the best way to follow is to keep a track of what I have going on in the modifier stack. So we are going to just add another bevel as you know me to do. And we'll place our 3D cursor here and we'll bring in a cube and perform a difference and so now we actually have our bevel being, you know, dealt with on an individual level with this global bevel happening. So let's say that we want to look at the wireframe. This is what we have. But if we want to make this actually work with subdivision, we would actually need to first triangulate to get rid of any of the ingons to be dealt with. And then we could actually slap a subdivision on the model. So this is basically how you would make Booleans and subdivision play together. It isn't the most recommended route, but it is the route that's available to us at this time with Blender in its current state. So right now we don't have sort subdivision on, but if I were to perform a cut, you know, there I am doing a box cutter maneuver again, we see that it just gets problematic. And this isn't actually the desired result that we want by a stretch. So the easiest way is to actually turn on subsurf sort and then from here we can select both of these perform a difference and we actually get the power of subsurf and booleans and bevels on multiple levels all at the same time while we're working inside the 3d view just working on the shape and so we can just bring in another shape bring this in grab this edge round it out and you know perform a difference and we see that you know everything's just sorting and working for you. And this is one of the reasons that hard ops is definitely one of those essential tools when it comes to managing a uh, very large, massive uh, modifier workflow, because, you know, we'll assist you with keeping your modifiers in the right order. And even though this seems like a very large stack, you know, we could slap a weighted normal on it by just alt clicking sharpen, just a very quick way to just get to a weighted normal. If I don't want to go to modifier, 
but we can just continue working and have the peace of mind that we're able to just work with all these mods on at the same time. And if we press Alt V and turn off wireframe, you know, we're getting a fairly good shaded result. And we're also able to basically keep all these mods under control. So that's basically the easiest way to explain sort. However, I do must add that there is a dedicated video just on the topic of sort. And for the most part, sort is one of those things that if it's working, it's fine. But if you're having a problem with it, that's where you want to look at the options and actually analyze what sort's going for you and if sort's actually working to your benefit. But in the end, you can always turn sort off, which will allow you to just basically bypass it and work as if you were dealing with another tool that didn't have sort. However, when it comes to weighted normal, we are fanatics about keeping the weighted normal at the end of the stack. So that's something that is just non-negotiable. However, when it comes to actually keeping your modifiers being able to just be free of sorting, you can do that simply by just turning off um, sort and you see that it actually placed a modifier at the end of the stack with the weight at normal aside due to shading reasons. So for this, we'll just turn sort back on and we'll bring, actually we'll bring the Boolean back up above the subdivision. Actually, we'll bring the Boolean all the way back up above the bevel. And we see that things are actually shaded back right. And we'll just perform one more cut here in our Boolean bevel, you know, sort piece here. And you see that, you know, everything just works. And that's mainly the goal that we go for is to try to provide users a flowing workflow that can be versatile depending on their way of doing things. So there's formal terms that I used to use like C sharp and S sharp that you don't see me talking about as much. And that's because we've really tried to open up the workflow to be usable for everyone of all disciplines without having these uh, special terms and workflow paths uh, really forcing people on the linear path. So if anything, our goal is to make hops a little more open for users rather than uh, restrict their movements to a particular workflow. But hopefully that should give you an idea on sort.